We want to welcome you all into the 28th episode of Trojan Talk. I'm Zach Taranko here with Cole Purvis and a special guest for the first episode, yeah. Isaac Edwards. How are you guys doing this morning? Awesome. I'm doing great. This is our first Trojan Talk episode of the 2022-23 uh, school year. Uh, but before we get into any sports talk, I want to ask you guys, tell me one thing you guys did this summer that you enjoyed. Uh, I worked at a hotel in Old Orchard called The Friendship. I also um, golfed a lot, swam a lot in my pool. Nice. We went to a Red Sox game. We visited Syracuse. So I had a pretty fun summer. Now nice. that was more than one thing. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went down to North Carolina this summer. Uh, did the college tour. Went to App State, UNC, nice. uh, High Point, and uh, UNC Greensboro. So, nice. Yeah. A lot of fun. Well, the first thing we'll talk about here is uh, TA Football, who had one of their first games last week. It was a 35-0 to win over Scarborough. A nice uh, first one of the season, and uh, it was uh, allowed us to see the football team for the first time. And they, they, they showed pretty well. Ryan O'Keefe had a great game. Same for Hayden Whitney. I want to ask you first, Cole. You know, there's obviously some questions going into this season. What is the team going to look like? You know, how are they going to perform? But obviously a nice win. What did you see from the team in that game? Well, 35 nothing is obviously a great start to the season. But it's clear that they have some things to figure out. They're using this double quarterback system with Caden True and Ryan O'Keefe. And Caden can obviously run the ball, a true dual threat. You know, he's, a, he's always a threat uh, to just lower the shoulder and – and he's a really mobile guy, and he's a complete spark to the offense, kind of like what we saw from Jack Emerson last year, but of course he's gone and graduated. Ryan O'Keefe is more of a traditional pocket-passing quarterback, mm -hmm. so I think the mix, it's not ideal. You don't want to have to do that, but it worked pretty well against Scarborough, uh, but then again, they completely outmatched Scarborough, so they could get exposed to their flaws by Oxford Hills this week. Um, and uh, they're certainly a run-first team. I think that's the theme for them this year. Hayden Whitney had almost 300 yards rushing against Scarborough, yeah. so it was a great game for him. Uh, they were noticeably thin coming into the season at wide receiver, but I think they'll get just enough production to get by. But I certainly think that um, if they can throw the ball and make sure that Oxford Hills doesn't sell out against the run, then they'll be able to move down the field against the Vikings pretty quickly. But it's going to be a great game, and I cannot wait uh, to broadcast that one on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, it'll be um, a good one. Um, I think in a 35 nothing video uh, victory, you got to really look at the defense. I mean, when you shut out a team like that, um, you got to give up uh, credit to the defensive line, just putting pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that was one of the big questions I had, you know, looking back at last season, both the entire offensive line and defensive line were all seniors. So uh, to see who come in, I know guys like Matt Kimball and Jack Brosh who had, had good games. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously uh, you mentioned it, Cole, uh, football, they have a game this weekend uh, at Saturday at 1.30 yep. uh, versus Oxford Hills. I know in my eyes, Tia comes in as the underdog. I know um, that uh, Oxford Hills looks great this year. Elias Soren is uh, at QB. Uh, what are your, what, what's your prediction? What are your thoughts uh, for that game on Saturday? I think they have a great chance. Uh, Oxford Hills is without their top receiver, Tegan Pelletier. He's mm -hmm. hurt, so they're going to be a little bit thin at that position, but they've got some great DBs as, as well as Soren on the offensive end of the ball. I, I think they just need to put Soren under a heap of pressure all day. We saw last year, first drive of the game in the state championship, he gets under too much pressure, and he he throws a pick six he has the ability to try and make the hero play and then ultimately um it could fail for him so i think they're going to need some takeaways they're definitely going to need to win the turnover battle but i think they have a great chance but certainly it's going to be a tough fight and we'll see how the quarterback battle plays out in that one as well i really think that our run game could really impact that game and definitely the, the, the turnover battle if we win that i think we're we got a good shot to win that game yeah I, th I think no matter what the score comes out it'll be a good one and uh exciting to watch for the first one uh, at hale stadium but speaking of the football team we're now going to have uh ta star running back hayden whitney in for a quick interview all right now we're joined by senior running back hayden whitney how you doing this morning pretty good pretty good so let's first talk about last week uh you know Coming in, a lot of question marks about this team. Tons of seniors graduated from last year's state title team. Uh, you guys kind of put a whooping down on Scarborough. What was the thoughts going into that game, knowing that there were so many new players that really didn't have much varsity experience? Uh, a lot of people were questioning how we do since all the seniors are graduated. But we were, we knew that if we went into that game confident and with a lot of energy, we were going to come out how we did. And so – Talk about the preseason a little bit. Again, you know, you kind of step into more of a leading role. You guys have a, a couple of great guys playing quarterback right now, kind of like a, a you know, a shuttling back and forth right now. What did you see in the first couple of weeks uh, that kind of made you confident that uh, this team can return back to a state championship this year? Uh, how fast everyone's learning. Uh, it's definitely a learning process with not as many returning players, but everyone's doing their part to 
learn what their their job is, and they're doing a great job at it. What would you say, um, both in the locker room and on the field, like maybe some guy that uh, doesn't get a lot of publicity but is a really important part of the TA football program? Again, maybe he's not the star player, but some guy kind of helps make the make the team go uh, all over the place. I don't know if there's a specific person. For me personally, that's the line for me. I love my line. Uh, everything that they do, obviously they credit me for the touchdown, but I can't get that touchdown without my line. Let's talk about some of the haircuts that we see, especially in some of those linemen. Like, who is the like? Just say the worst, the worst haircut. Like, just terrible. I don't know if they have bad haircuts. I love them. <laughs> oh, I love boy. the mullets. You love the mullets. Okay. Well, it's definitely interesting. You definitely know who's on the football team as they walk around campus. Yeah. yeah. So, looking forward uh, this week. Obviously, Oxford Hills, uh, huge game. Uh, you know, it's early in the season, week two, to have to go up against a team that you guys beat uh, twice last year, including the state championship. You guys have already looked at the film. Like, what what are, what are some of the things that? Uh, first of all, talk about the things that maybe make you worry about them. I mean, obviously they return quite a bit from last year. Yeah, they definitely have uh, more returning players, uh, and their returning players play pretty pretty big roles in their team last year, and obviously their team this year. Uh, so we just plan to key in on them. Yeah, and um, oh, forget one thing about last week. Your your ninety six was it ninety four ninety six yards that you had that one line. I think it was ninety four. I think it was from the six yard line. What was that like? Like when you see that open space for those of us who've never experienced that. Like what does that feel like? Are you constantly worried that you're going to get caught from behind, or is it just like sole focus? I mean, what's that feeling when you're across the fifty and the forty and the thirty and you're almost there? Well, starting the play, I was looking at it and they knew what the play was, uh, so I knew I'd have to cut it inside a little bit but once I saw a gap it was probably like a five ten yard gap between the linebackers I knew that was my chance I had to take it so I just went for it and just said go all out and if I get caught I get caught but try not to and that time you didn't because before you had a long run they got caught from behind a little bit by yeah. one of their sinker safeties but um, now talk a little bit too about their they have brand new turf there at Scarborough and our turf is a little bit older and they're going to replace it in the next couple of years and what is it like when you get out there with new because that is actually um, I was looking at the material it's not really a rubber rubber it's like a cork yeah so does that did that change the way that you ran the ball or, or what is it like you know playing on a brand new that was the first game that's been played on that new service definitely changes a little bit how I how to run and cut and stuff, but the turf was was really nice to sink your, your cleats into. Uh, it was a great traction, uh, so it was a little different, but it was pretty easy to get used to. Nice. What uh, what's the playlist like inside the locker room this year? Is it to change year to year? Like, is there one guy who's like, all right, you're in charge of the music in the locker room, like before a game or practice? Uh, usually everyone looks at the captains, and I think this year we kind of looked at uh, Brent. Brent has a pretty Pollen, good playlist. Yep. Okay. What's this? What's the song? I mean, I, I tell you what. Just walking around campus, like I don't know how many times there's a certain country song that you play all the time, um, that I hear at practice all the time. It's from like five or five years ago. It's one that says like I'm coming to your city or whatever. Like, uh, I'm not sure what song that is. You know, if you heard, maybe I'll play it on here because I just hear it all the time during the practice mix. So football coaches, uh, I always like to talk about ask about the coaches, and you know, some coaches have different strategies than others. Football coaches, they're rougher around the edges let's just say that and not just here at ta but everywhere what is it like like just getting completely chewed out by a coach at, at practice specifically you know it's maybe it's a hot day it's preseason. you do something wrong and you know that you did it wrong but like what is that feeling when either coach kiesel or or one of the other coaches just comes after you what's that feeling like i mean you just have to acknowledge it realize that you made a mistake fix the mistake and have a short memory and move on you can't fix what already happened so you can only fix it going forward yeah, one thing I've heard Coach Kiesel say and some other coaches is if we're not yelling at you, that means we've kind of given up on you. You know what I mean? So it's almost a good no, a good thing to get yelled at. Um, so looking forward to the season. Obviously, the, it's kind of a murder's row schedule here. Scarborough on the roads can, sometimes can be tricky. Pass that test. Oxford Hills and then Bedford, New Hampshire, which this team's really never played. Uh, after that, it kind of opens up a little bit. So what do you think about having really two of your top you know, toughest three games here right in the first three weeks as you're still trying to get acclimated with a new, new line, new uh, skill players as well? Uh, I kind of like it. I think it'll it'll help us mature faster, get to a, our best faster. I think we'll grow as a team over the next two weeks, uh, hopefully in a good way. I think we will be in a good way, uh, and I think it'll just help us out overall. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, uh, two quarterbacks really playing uh, last Friday. Uh, you have uh, Ryan and Caden as well. What uh, besides the, the, what we saw? Obviously, what are the two? What are the different things that they bring uh, to to the game and, and on a specific series? And especially you as a running back, when you, is there certain different um, formations you're doing? Is there, what, what kind of different things do they bring? Uh, 
usually it's a lot similar. Uh, Caden probably more with like option plays. He's a lot faster, a lot athletic, more athletic. Uh, but Ryan also has one great arm. Uh, but they're both great. They both contribute so much to the offense. Yeah. What would it mean for you and this group of seniors to, you know, create your own legacy, as we like to say here? You know, there's been five state championships in the last nine years. What it would be like for you guys to kind of leave your mark and, and win a state championship as you go out? I think it'd be great, especially, like you said, the last four or five years, we've just been watching great teams come through, and I think it would it'd really mean a lot if we became one of those great teams that we've always watched. Absolutely. What is uh, just – general first day first couple days of school was it like you're a senior now you're the you guys are the big guys on campus and what is it like coming back you know what are your classes like anything you're looking forward to this year off off the football field uh it was pretty exciting coming back to school uh i was working a lot over the summer and playing some sports but i was excited i don't know if there's a class specifically that i'm excited for probably be like sports lit it's a pretty fun class um and, and obviously, this being a uh, one last question, this being a normal year, like no COVID restrictions or anything, you know, how lucky do you feel considering the last few years have not been normal from the start? So great. I'm so happy everything's returning. Everything's coming back. All the dances, all the prep, ra- prep rallies and all that. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Who's got the nicest whip on the on the team? Like, I'm not even saying the nicest car, like, but just like, I obviously, is it Brent that has like that really fluffy, like, yeah, pink? I think it would also have to be Brent again. <laughs> yeah. the, the Ford First of all, you can hear him coming from like, you know, half a mile away, but it's got that bright pink, like, furry. It must be very comfortable in the wintertime, I can oh, imagine. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, you want to shout out your socials here as we as we wrap up so people can give uh, you, drop you a follow? I mean, it's just Hayden Whitney 1 1 on Instagram. That's all. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Good luck on Saturday against Oxford Hills. Thank you. We want to thank Hayden Whitney for coming in for that interview. And now we'll move on to talk about some boys and girls soccer. Uh, Both the boys and girls soccer played Marshwood in their first game of the season. The girls team lost 2-1. Charlotte Blander had the only goal for the girls team. And the boys lost 3-0. But a good showing for both teams. They have some games coming up this week. And uh, we'll now talk about some field hockey. Field hockey had a uh, a good start to the season, 2-1. They had a game on Tuesday night where they beat Gorham 1-0. Not... um, Maybe not the best start they wanted, but uh, still some great wins. And uh, obviously the fall sports are all off to a good start, and we have a lot of games coming up. And just um, quick, oh. Yeah, um, just a little shout-out. Uh, we got Pep Band back this year mm-hmm. for uh, for TA football. We, we're trying to get uh, this game Saturday to be there. Um, definitely the upcoming games will definitely be there. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just as we mentioned before, I want to let you know that we have that girls' soccer game uh, tonight, Thursday night at 6.30, and then the boys' football game versus Oxford Hills at 1.30 on Saturday. So if you can't make it to the game, you can always watch it on TATV. Uh, we'll be broadcasting both those games. But it is now time to move into some professional sports, and we've got to talk about it. The NFL is back uh, tonight. Let's the f- go. The first game, Bills-Rams. Before we get into anything about any other teams, I want to know who do you think is going to win that game? Um, I think the Bills come in and spoil the party. But, yeah, I'm just so glad that football season's back. And it's officially back now that we get NFL, high school, college in the same week. So it's great. Yeah, I got the Bills um, tonight. Uh, and I uh, feel like uh, Josh Allen is he's going to have an MVP season this year. Um, Stephon Diggs is r- going to be a big factor this year for the Bills. So Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about some predictions of the season. I know it's somewhat early to do that, but – um, I guess we'll just take it from the AFC and the NFC. I just want to get your guys' thoughts. Who do you think is going to come out of those uh, those conferences? Who do you think has the best chance? Who's maybe like your sleeper team, a team you might think make the playoffs or make a deep run? Well, I think the top storyline of the season is how is that AFC West division going to play out? I mean, I think it's going to be hard for all four of those teams to make the playoff because that's just hard to do in general, but it's so tough to pick one of these teams to miss the playoff. So that's going to be the biggest storyline to watch this year. I think there are two or three teams in the AFC that are better than the best team in the NFC. But that being said, my Super Bowl prediction, I hate to pick the favorites, but I think the Bills are going to go on a run this year. I just think they're a juggernaut of an offense, and they have enough defense. They got Von Miller this offseason. And out of the NFC, I'm going to go with the Packers. It's thin in the NFC, but I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be very motivated this year, losing Devontae Adams. I think he's going to put this team on his back. Um, and if he can do it with a receiving core of like Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins, Christian Watson, that would be really impressive. So it definitely could be the Bucks again, but that's my Super Bowl pick. 
Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bills in the AFC, but um, I just want to say, sleeper team, watch out for the Dolphins. I think Tyreek Hill with uh, Tua. Tua's going to shine this year. I really think that uh, Tyreek Hill is just going to run around and uh, Tua's just going to hit him when he's open. Um, in the NFC, I like uh, the Bucks. I think Tom is just so consistent, and uh, he's coming back. He's got still he's still got a great uh, wide receiver core with Mike Evans um, and with uh, – with uh, Ron Ronald Jones on the team, I think he'll he'll really uh, at running back. He'll he's gonna shine again as twenty five straight years. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, Bills in the AFC, but uh, my NFC pick, I'm I think the Rams. I mean, I know that they just won a Super Bowl last year, but I think their team um, is, is just as good. Yeah, I think the addition of Allen Robinson is great. I mean, they didn't have Robert Woods in the playoffs, so. Um, that could that's another addition for them, but I think the NFC is a toss up for me. I think the AFC yeah, is a little more clear, sure. but the NFC, mm-hmm. you know, they, there's like Packers. I'm not too sure about yet with how their uh, their receiving core is going to work with Rodgers, but yep. the first couple of weeks will show us. And I mean, looking at Week One games, I know there's a couple storylines. You know, Russell Wilson playing the Seahawks for the first time, Baker Mayfield playing uh, Browns. The, the the Browns. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I don't think those are really exciting games. I, yeah. I, it's kind of cool to think about it. Yeah. But um, I think that the game of uh, right now is probably Bills Rams. That's yeah, the game I, everyone's I, I, excited for. Yeah, I'm ready for tonight. Let's yeah. get it. Yeah. And I think uh, the Patriots' offense will be fine. They're going to get off to a slow <laughs> start, but um, with Matt Patricia calling pra- plays, I really think Bill Belichick is just going to oversee the offense. It's not really going to be Matt Patricia, and I think the Patriots will be fine. Not good enough to make the playoffs, but that's another big. I have a couple other storylines here. Also, um, the 49ers QB situation. How mm-hmm. does Trey Lance work out? Uh, with Jim, Jimmy G still there, but how does he play? Because if he struggles, it's going to get loud, and people are going to want Jimmy G back in. So that's a huge thing, and there's a lot of other great um, storylines as well. But yeah. I'm just excited for the season to start. Yeah, I, with the Patriots, I think it's going to be a rough year, guys. I really don't think – I know we want to be in the playoffs this year, but uh, it's it's just that coaching is – I don't really – it's Joe Judge and Matt Patricia. I don't think Matt Patricia is that good offensive coach, and Joe Judge is just a special teams guy. So I – it's gonna be a long year, guys. I'm just saying. Yeah, I have to. I have to agree there. I don't know. Um, I've looked at the schedule a couple of times. I know they pull like the Ravens, the Dolphins, and the, and the Raiders the first schedule. the first couple of weeks. Um, so it'll it'll be tough. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, December's gonna be a long month. It, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. So we'll talk about some fantasy football. I don't know. Do you guys both do fantasy football? Yeah, uh, yeah you do. Yeah, All right. Do. Have you guys both drafted yet? Yep. Yeah. You have. Uh-huh. Just give me a rundown of your guys' teams. Um, I. I have Tua at my quarterback. I, I I like drafting quarterbacks late, but I have um, uh, Derrick Henry. I just pulled off a trade in mind. Uh, Derrick Henry for uh, Josh Allen. I really need the quarterback, and I feel like Josh Allen's going to shine this year. So Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I, I'm a big – I think this is the year that you can take a receiver in the first round and be fine. I think Jefferson and Cup were both great options. So I took Justin Jefferson yeah. at the fourth pick. Um, I got Jalen Hurts as my quarterback in my – most competitive league I got him in like seventh round I think um my running backs aren't great I have Zeke and AJ Dillon which could be better but it's not terrible yeah yeah um yeah I think Jefferson's gonna have a big year uh same with CD Lamb of the Cowboys so yeah yeah JJ is gonna go off yeah for the Vikings yes I was in a, a 12 person uh a 12 team league this year and there's a couple of jokesters in that league, so quarterbacks <laughs> going second round. So I had to, I took Herbert uh, pretty early, uh, good but I ended up getting uh, Dalvin Cook and Mark Andrews as like right. kind of my solid picks. So yeah. I, I I'm this is a time of year where like even if I don't win fantasy football, I still like watching every week yeah. and like seeing how how yeah. many points my team will get. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm excited definitely. I'm I'm really excited the NFL's back and um, you know I'm I'm hoping that it it takes its time because uh, it's always yeah. I think one of the best times of the year because yeah, you got other sports coming back in and the NFL is uh it's a big one. But we'll talk about some Celtic stuff real quick. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, Danilo Gallinari tore his ACL a few weeks ago uh, when he was playing, I believe. I'm not sure what league he was playing in, but he was yeah, playing some w- overseas. The Euro, yeah, the yeah, Euro in Europe. tournament. Yeah. Um, he's probably going to be out, I'm assuming, at least a few months, maybe even for the entire yeah. season. Yeah, he's done for the year. I think. Yeah. So 
the their kind of star power forward or somebody they really thought would come in and help out is not going to be there anymore. And people have been speculating on who might come to Boston or who Boston might sign in replacement of him. And somebody that's right up there is Carmelo Anthony. I want to get you guys' thoughts, both of you. Cole, first, what do you think about Carmelo Anthony? Do you think they even need it to add on to that team, or do you think that uh, they should they should bring him? I mean, it's always a okay move to bolster your bench, but I don't think he's going to make too much of an impact, maybe just a 3 and D guy occasionally. But I think it, the Gallinari loss is pretty brutal because that was a great pickup uh, for yes. them. He would have been very productive this year. Uh, but they also got Malcolm Brogdon, who's, yep. I think, one of the most underrated players in the NBA. Uh, he's going to help a lot for them. So I still think they have a good offseason, and they're ready to go on another run. Yeah, it's a, a huge loss, Gallinari, uh, ACL. But with Melo, I think he's just too old. I really yeah. don't think we need to pick up a player at his age. I think he's if we pick him up, I feel like he's just going to sit on the bench, maybe hit a couple threes a game. But um, with the Euro tournament, I would just like to say that um, there's a lot of big NBA stars playing in that right now. You got yeah. Giannis, you got Joker, um, and you got uh, Luka. I was watching a game. I was just flipping through, and I saw Luka – he was on the Slovenia team. He was playing Bosnia. And this guy, I don't know about Luka, but he likes to complain a lot. Every time he was getting fouled, he was just yelling at the refs and, and just complaining so much. So, I don't know. I was thinking that, you know, with Tatum's performance last year in the finals, you know, it was kind of underwhelming. Even though he had to fracture it, I was like, all right, can we get Luka in here maybe for a trade? I'm just saying. But I really don't think Luka is that guy. Like, he's he's just – a baby i really think so <laughs> that's a hot take yeah so you guys obviously mentioned the Celtics bench you know looking at it right now on paper i believe it's to be pritchard brogdon white uh grant williams and then maybe luke cornett as the center i'm not sure if he'll be uh if he'll get any time but i want to i want to get your guys thoughts do you think the Celtics have the best bench in the nba they definitely they're definitely up there i mean grant williams as a guy who doesn't like the celtics was pretty frustrating <laughs> um for them uh, to play against last year for the Celtics, he's really um, kind of like I know he liked to call it, what was it? He called himself Batman or he something. Did, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a good defender, and I like I said, Brogdon's going to be an awesome addition uh, for them. So yeah, they're definitely one of the best benches in the NBA, as well as having a great starting lineup. So they're one of the best in the East for sure. Yeah, I feel best in the East. Um, hopefully, we can get back to the the finals this year. Um, as a Celtics fan, um, I really. I feel like if Tatum was healthy, healthy last year, uh, it would have been a different outcome. Just played yeah. better. So yeah, it sucks, but uh, yeah. Cole got his uh, NBA Finals yes. win. Sure. So well, we'll get it next year. Yeah. But let's talk about some college football. The first week was this week. There were a couple of uh, interesting games. If I'm correct, I think Florida State upset LSU. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there were a couple others as well. Yeah. Um, but before we get into any of the week one, I. Uh, it was mentioned, I believe, this week or last week that uh, college football in 2026 is changing to the 12-team playoff format. What do you guys think about that format? I, I think, personally, it should have been here so many years oh, yeah, before. Yeah. But what do you guys think about it? And uh, is that Are you guys really excited for it? I love it. I'm so excited for this. It gives hope to the teams. Like I remember UCF a couple years ago went undefeated, and all their fans are saying, we want Bama. Well, now they're going to get the chance to maybe play mm-hmm. Bama. Um and you're going to get these quarterfinal matchups on campus, uh, on these home fields. The atmosphere is going to be electric for those. I, I just can't wait for these games. It gives hope to these teams, these smaller schools that go on a big run. They'll get to compete for a championship. Um, and then I like 12 as opposed to like 16 because – uh, the best thing college football has is their regular season. It, their regular season is probably better than like any other sport, and so it still gives value to the regular season in the sense that the top four teams get a bye. So yep. that's motivation for Bama and Georgia and Ohio State, teams like that, uh, to try and get into that top four and not have to play the first round of the playoffs. Again, uh, people are saying, well, the national championship's probably still going to be Bama versus Ohio State every year. Probably, but it still adds a lot of excitement around mm-hmm that uh, December bowl season time. So I am so thrilled for this, and I can't wait for 2026 to come. Yeah, the more football, the better. Um, yeah. I love college football, so if if we can get more crucial games at the end of the season, I think that would be great for the team, uh, for the 
for the college football. So. Yeah, I think as you said, Cole, it's like even if it ends up being one versus two or one yeah. versus three or four, it is still allows for that five to mm-hmm. 12, those spots for people to actually work for. Because, I mean, sometimes it feels like if you lose one game, there's no way you're going to make it yeah. in the top four. There's no way you're going to be yeah. able to get up there with the way they do the rankings. So it's very exciting, um, especially for teams that, you know, have been just shy the last couple of years. Um, I w- you're right. I wish 2026 was more like yeah. 2023, so uh, I could be here the next year. But uh, I'm definitely excited. But looking at Week One, I mean, I I've watched some games. I don't know if there's if you guys saw any spectacular games. I mean, I'm an Ohio State guy, so I like Oof. watching C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I'm that a was... Bama guy. No, okay, I... yeah, but that yeah. that LSU game was crazy. Yeah. Um, that 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 uh, that upset win, and then I don't know who the two teams were, but um. Somebody was up by like forty or fifty points. It was and then North it Carolina was, and it was I, the App State. Yeah, was it App State? They they scored like forty points in the fourth quarter. Fourth lost. quarter. Yeah, but we still lost. Um, I like App State. I fin- I visit there over yep. the summer. So, yeah, I can't believe we uh, we pulled that off. Uh, but we almost did. I wish we pulled that off. That would have been. That would yeah, been crazy. That'd been crazy. And just to finish up this episode, I want to ask you guys a question. You know, just just for fun. Um. If you guys were, I mean, think about fantasy football. If you guys were um, a general manager and yeah. and they did a whole, you know, everybody was up for an entire like a fa- like a mm-hmm. fantasy draft kind of thing, who would be your franchise of a player? If there was, if you got, if you got like the first or second pick in this draft, like a real life draft, yeah, like a, of the NFL, oh, like yeah. offense or defense, yeah, anybody. I think. Um, we'll do one offensive player and one defensive player. Right. Offensive, I would go with Josh Allen. You have to have that guy at quarterback, and he's proven that he can. I think he's slightly better than Mahomes with his rushing ability, mm-hmm. and he's obviously very accurate passer and has a huge arm, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Defense, I think it's pretty – well, I was going to say pretty easily Aaron Donald, but he's getting a little older, yeah. even threatened to retire. So I, would, I, th- I still think I would go Aaron Donald, maybe Micah Parsons, though. Not yeah. sure. Yeah, I would go defense, Michael Parsons, definitely. That young talent, you need that to start off a roster. Um, offense, I'd probably go, like, Devontae Adams. I think he's one of the best wide receivers in the league, and you need a guy to catch the ball and score points for a team. So, yeah. Devontae Adams. Also, a quick shout-out to Trent Williams, who I think is the best offensive lineman in the NFL, yeah. and I think he deserves consideration, too. Yeah, that, right. that would be a, a good pick. I think offensively, I'd do Josh Allen, but defensively, I'd do Miles Garrett. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. I think, I mean, I know he's had some some issues with suspensions and the, the whole helmet thing with Mason Rudolph, yeah. but yeah. Uh, he's a great player, and he's, I don't know how, I think he's pretty young, though. I think he's not yeah. Uh, yeah. not too old, but uh, yeah, that's, okay. uh, what, maybe one day they'll do that, just like, just switch up all the teams just, just because. Just yeah, to, just because. Yeah. If they lose all their money, go bankrupt. Yeah, we need something. <laughs> all right. Well, that is going to do it for episode 28 of Trojan Talk. I want to thank Isaac for coming in again yeah. and Cole, as always. So we will see you all next week for another episode. Uh, have a great day. Yeah.